hello there everyone welcome to another video and today we are going to see how you can make a contact form that basically sends your data basically sends the contact data into a google sheet using the google sheet api so let's look at a demo of this if it's working or not so i'm going to enter my name usman and then the email let's just say abc at xyz.com and then the message is going to be hey usman how are you let's just go ahead and hit send and you will see what happens is we get the data right over here no one is adding this in the background we wrote the code of this to make it work that's what we are going to see in today's video and right now if you see there are no changes in the front end like whenever i hit send the font isn't cleared out we are going to fix that later on but for now you see this is working and let's enter some other data so i'm just going to refresh and let's uh, right click and fake filler and then fill all inputs this is a chrome extension that fills up fake data so i'm going to hit send and you see we have a lot more data one more thing that we have is the email validation so for instance if i remove the at so now this is not a valid email right so if i hit send it's just going to tell me that hey it's not a valid email but if someone sends it to our api we're also going to catch that now let's go ahead and start coding so the first thing we'll need is our project now in here we are going to use express and google api you cannot do this from the front end itself so you will need a back end and that's what we are going to do we are going to create a back end and then in that back end we are going to add the, that little bit of front end that we that i showed you so go ahead and create a folder with the name you want and let's start coding so i'm going to open this up in vs code using the terminal so let's go ahead and generate a node.js project so i'm going to say npm init dash y now if you don't have any experience with node.js or express i highly suggest you to go ahead and learn that first because you are not going to understand how this works so what that will do is that will generate a package.json file with some metadata that we want and let's actually go ahead and use this inbuilt terminal inside of vs code all right so now what we are going to do is we are going to install some dependencies let's go ahead and npm install we are, we are going to need express very first and then we are also going to need google apis and i showed you the validation for email that's for the front end part but for the back end we will need zod so these are the only three dependencies we need so hit enter and let them install till it's getting installed let's go ahead and create a folder and i'm going to name it src inside of this folder i'm going to create a new file called index.js because we are going to write javascript code after these dependencies are done installing let's go ahead and install a few dev dependencies we are going to need at types slash types slash express even though we are not using typescript this will be useful for us because we are not going to use the normal require in node.js we are going to use the import statement instead and with that you will probably need these types for intelligence to work and then finally we will need nodemon for our constant restarting the server so let's add the dash d flag and install these depend dev dependencies as well after they are installed let's go ahead inside of the package or json we can see that here we have our dependencies and dev dependencies let's go ahead and create a script i'm going to call this dev and it's going to point nodemon it will be source slash index.js and as i told before we are going to use import instead of require so if we want that we have to just go ahead and set the type in here to module instead of common js that's it for our installation let's go ahead and configure the google api now now comes the part where people mess up very easily because it's very complicated but let's try to make it as simple as we can so first off go ahead and search for google dev console and that's what i do usually and then just open the first link up because i don't remember the url pretty often once you have the google dev console open you might see this screen when you are just starting out when you have no projects and if you have some projects then also i think you can just go ahead and create a new project from here and that's what we are going to do we are going to create a new project and let's name this project contact form or let's say my contact form right and 
you see the project id is going to be this and it cannot be changed later so make sure you are happy with this project id and let's hit create all right so now the project is created you can see the graphs of how traffic how how much errors you have how much latency there is there's there's lots of things now what we have to do is we have to go ahead and enable the google sheets api because we want to interact with our google sheet right so let's go ahead and enable apis and services click there and then let's search for sheets because that's what we want and you will see the google sheets api just go ahead and click on that and let's hit enable now this is totally free you don't need to worry about paying anything it won't even take take your credit card right now but when it crosses a given threshold which i don't think is very high so then if you want to continue you might want to pay you also see the graph of how the sheets api is performing as well so after the api is enabled let's go ahead and go to credentials because now is the main part how will you interact with your sheet now for this particular use case you will need a google service account a service account is simply another google account an email sort of thing that will be able to interact with your sheet or any other sheet if it's added inside of that sheet so let's first of all take a look at how it works so right over here you will see nothing you will see this part where you have no api keys no auth client keys now if you are performing it on another level where you have the user to select what email they want to use then you would most probably go with oauth but for this demo we we don't need oauth instead we just need the service account so let's go ahead and create credentials and we need to create the service account and after that's done let's go ahead and create a service account let's give it a name i'm going to say contact form bot that's what i'm going to name it even though it's not a bot technically but let's just name it a bot then this is going to be the service account id and this is going to be the service account email address so this is what we will need to add to our google sheet so that this bot can edit our sheet all right uh, we can add a description so let's just add a description adds um, data from a contact form to my sheet let's go ahead and create and continue we don't need to worry about it at all that's it uh, and you can skip all this optional part once it is created let's just go ahead and open this up so after opening this up you will need to go inside of keys and then you will have to go ahead and add a new key so let's create a new key and you have two options json or p12 we need to go with json because that is the recommended way so let's go ahead and create it now once you will create that it will be downloaded so if you are deploying it on some sort of server you should go ahead and create a new key for that and you should put that on that server as well so make sure to save this file inside of your project right over here and make sure to name it secrets.json you can name it anything you want but secrets is simple to remember so that's why we will name it secrets so let's go ahead and right click and copy path and we can just go ahead and save it as we can just go ahead and paste that path that we copied earlier and we can rename it to secrets very simple so once that's done you cannot download it again once the secrets json file is ready make sure to not share it with someone because it is a secret right once it's in your project let's go ahead and create a new sheet so just go to sheets.google.com or this url right over here this is very hard to remember or you can just type sheets.new to create a new blank sheet so let's go ahead and click on blank and that's going to add a new sheet for us you can rename this sheet let's say contact 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 form data you can name it anything you want now once this is created we need to see what data we need so we need the name the email and the message so let's just create name email and message because that's what we are going to add so i'll just rename the i'll just name the columns above right over here so we don't need to worry about it once that's done now we need the bot to go ahead and edit this sheet and how are we going to be able to do that well all you have to do is just go ahead and copy the email for this contact form bot that we created this service account so you can just go into details and just copy this email and then just go ahead and go to share and then you can just go ahead and 
paste that link and set this as editor instead of just viewer so editor and hit send and that will basically add this bot to your google sheet once that's done we don't need to mess with our sheet let's keep it open and also we don't need this tab but let's keep it open anyways so now it's time to start coding first off let's create the general express server if you are familiar with it you can skip this part but i'll just do that so let's import express from express and then we can create app using we'll just call express let's just call app dot listen on port 5000 you can put any port you want i like 5000 for servers and then let's add a callback function i'll just say console log let's just make it an arrow function console log app running on port on local host port 5000 let's add http before that so that's to run our app and now let's also go ahead and say app.use express.json if you don't know what this means it's basically we are going to use post request and the body that we receive in json format we need that so we have to use this middleware by express once that is done let's create a simple post route so app.post i'm going to call this slash send dash message so this is going to be the route and then we need right over here we'll need the request and response let's just go ahead and console dot log the request dot data sorry request dot body now let's open up the terminal back again and i'm going to run npm run dev so that starts up our server localhost port 5000 now how do we test this post request we can just go ahead and go to thunder client now if you don't know what thunder client is it's like postman but inside of vs code so you can just go ahead and search for thunder client inside of vs code and then inside of extensions you can just go ahead and install it it's actually a lifesaver so let's go inside of thunder client let's create a new request let's just go ahead and copy localhost 5000 and let's paste this right over here so now let's go ahead and put the post request and instead of body i'm going to create i'm going to put some random gibberish data that really does not make any difference also we don't need this home route we can just go ahead and say slash send dash message because this is what we named our route right over here hit send and you see it does nothing because we don't return a response but if you open up the terminal we finally get the output so this is the body right let's go ahead and let's start status is going to be let's just let's start send status it's going to be 200 and what this will do is basically it will resolve the response just return okay all right so once that is done let's create a schema of what we need in our backend so that no one can send unnecessary data we installed the library called zord and that will be its purpose so what you can do is you can just Go ahead and import something from zod and then let's just import z right and then we can just go ahead and create a a schema that we will validate later on so we can just call this const contact form schema all right that's going to be equal to z dot object because this is going to be essentially our body this request dot body right so this is going to be z dot object inside of object we first will need the name so name is going to be z dot string then we will have email which will also be z dot string but for email validation you can also add dot email so that will automatically validate if it is an email or not then we have the message which is also going to be z dot string so let's go inside of name and we can add some sort of validation so this is going to be min one which means we at least need one character in the name and then we can add a sort of object right over here and then the message like if this fails what do we have to do so we can just say message is going to be name is required so this is going to be the error message then we can just go ahead and go to the message part and we can add the same thing min it's going to be one and then the message sorry the message is going to be message is required means if someone goes ahead and misses the name or the message we're going to output this error right we did not add it to the email part because dot email automatically makes it required so we don't need to add this inside of email 
once our schema is ready we can just go ahead and let's use zord now if you have never used zord before this is a really nice tutorial for you it might help you in the future to validate your body so let's just clear out everything we have and we can go ahead and create let's say const body i'm going to call this body you can call this whatever you want it's going to be create sorry not create contact form schema dot parse so basically we can parse request dot body so what it will do is it will take request dot body it will compare this body against this part that we have set up and if it's fine it will return to us the final object or if it's not right it's going to throw an error so now it throws an error so let's just wrap this inside of a try catch block so let's just put this part instead of try and then we can just go ahead and create a catch with an error and now we will catch the error so the error this throws is an instance of zord error so we can just make an f check so if error instance of zord error now we import zord error from zord again so if error is instance of zord error which means that the error is thrown by this parse so that means if for instance name is missing or email or message if something is missing it's going to throw an error we can just go ahead and response we can just say the status is going to be 400 which means a bad request and then we can pass in some json we can return some json where the error is going to be error dot message so you see we also get intelligence right over here which is really cool once all that is done let's go ahead and also add an else part where we'll just duplicate the same thing but instead we're just going to return the error as it is right you can also do error colon error but if the key and the value are same you don't usually need the second part so you can just skip that so the error handling part is done let's go ahead and minimize this because it's too messy let's go inside of the try block and let's make this work so once we get back the body how do we go about adding this to our google sheet well what you can do is you can configure google sheets everything inside of this one file if you want but i usually like to create another file so i'll just go ahead and create a new file it's going to be sheet client dot js you can name it anything you want right it's all up to you then right over here we are going to use the google api's library so let's go ahead and import something from from google api's and we are going to import google just google nothing else and then let's also create a sheet id variable so sheet underscore id is going to be some string so so we can get the sheet id by simply going in here inside of the sheet that we want to put data in and then let's just we can just go ahead and go to the url and we can copy this part so that comes after d and before edit so let's just copy this whole sheet id we can just go back and paste the sheet id so this is the sheet id and let's also export this sheet id so we can export this variable from this file because we'll need it in other files as well so once that is done let's also import the json file so you remember this secrets.json that we have we can import the secrets we want in from this file so we can just go ahead and let's just say import something from dot dot slash secrets.json now if you have node.js project with the type set to module right over here we have the type to module it won't automatically import json files so if you want to import json files all you have to do is just add this keyword assert and then the type is going to be json so basically it will parse this json file into objects just as we want so we can just import whatever we want we got all these things like client email client id whatever what we are going to do is we are going to import the client email that's the first thing and then the private key these are the two things that we will need from this secrets.json file you can also store these two things somewhere else in some environment variables if you need to but for this video let's just go with this way right now if you want to interact with our google sheet we have to go ahead and create a google sheet client a client is basically something that interacts with our google sheet that we have to create inside of our code and that will basically communicate with our sheet however we want it to be so let's go ahead and create a client so i'm just going to say const client is equal to new google dot auth 
dot jwt now there are many ways to create a client this is one of the ways but you can go ahead and create a client in many other ways as you wish to i would highly recommend checking out fireships video about google sheets as a database he shows another way to create a client in javascript but for this video let's go with this way because it seems really simple to me so inside of the jwt all you have to do is you have to pass in the client email that we import from up here and then we can pass in the key file so this is the key file now because we import something from the key file we don't need to pass in the whole file so we can just call this null and then finally the key so this is going to be the private key so let's just paste that now after we have passed all three things we also need one more we need an array so this is the scope how much would you give permission for this client to interact with the sheet so what we can do is we can just go ahead and pass in a string and we can pass in a URL. We're going to say HTTPS colon slash slash www.googleapis.com slash auth slash spread sheets. So basically this client can interact with the spreadsheets. That's all. It's not going to interact with the Google Docs or Google Slides. It's going to interact only with the spreadsheets. So that's what we have. Now for some reason, Pretios throws us an error. Let's take a look. It says, it says a JSON module can only be imported with default. So let's just go ahead and get this out. So let's just name this key and then we can just pass in key.client email and key.private key because we cannot import data from a JSON file directly. We have to import it fully. All right, so that's it with the client. Let's go ahead and now after we've created the client, we need access to our sheet, right? So what you can do is you can just go ahead and say, let's create a variable called sheets and that's going to be google.sheets and then we can just go ahead and open up the options right over here. We can set the version to v4 and then let's add auth and auth will be our client which means we get the sheets back and this client that we have right over here this will interact with our sheet and the version is going to be version 4 let's go ahead and finally export default export default sheets so now we are done with our sheet client file i hope you understood it if you did not understand something let me know in the comments below i will try my best to explain it once this is done, let's close this file and also let's close the package or JSON. So now we need our sheet. So we can just go ahead and import. Let's say import something from dot slash sheet client dot JS. Remember, this is very crucial adding a dot JS because in Node.js, if you set type to module, you will need a dot JS after that. So what do we want to import? Well, we need the sheet ID first of all that we exported and we exported the sheets so let's just say because this is export default we need to import it like this and this is export normally this is exported normally so we import it like this so once we import these things let's go inside of here inside of try we can go ahead and say await now we are using async await here so this function right over here needs to be an asynchronous function let's just say it's going to be async then we have await sheets dot spreadsheets dot we can say values dot append sorry append and then inside of here let's open up an object so we have to pass in lots of things the first thing we'll need is the spreadsheet id now the spreadsheet id is the sheet id that we imported right from up there and then let's put that in here then we will need the range so the range is going to be a string now the range is basically from where to where you want your data to be appended right you can just go ahead and let's just say one two three so we need our data from a2 to c2 that's that is our range so let's just copy this and paste this and this is a2 to c2 this is our range but we also need to specify which sheet so we can just say sheet one and then put an exclamation mark to separate these two so we have inside of sheet one from a2 to c2 is where we want to append our data so this sheet one comes right from here where we have the sheet name you can also rename this if you want let's just rename this to uh, data i'm just going to rename this to data and let's go ahead going back to our code we can rename this to data as well now that's our range next up we have insert data option these are some parameters that we have to pass in so let's just go ahead and pass them in so insert data option is going to be insert 
underscore rows this basically specifies that hey i want to insert rows then we have value sorry value input option and that's going to be raw completely right and then finally we will pass in the request body which will be an object in itself then we can pass in the values so now comes the main part how do we pass in the values so the values is going to be an array of arrays so the yellow square bracket that you see is going to specify the all data all the data that you want and the pink square bracket inside of that is going to be one individual row so for instance let's just say i'm going to pass in whatever some gibberish data i'm going to add a comma i'm going to add one more and then comma add one more so we have this is going to be the data for one row right and if you want one more row let's copy this add a comma and paste this so this is going to be the data for another row now we set the range from a2 to c2 so this is not going to work this will work the first item will work but the second won't work so let's just make the second work i'm just going to remove c2 completely and i'll keep the colon so now basically this data will get added inside of our sheet so let's hit save and let's just go ahead and send a request again let's see if yeah our app is running on localhost 5000 so if i hit send so it throws us an error that hey i expected the name the email and the message so let's just pass in those things first so let's say the name is going to be usman the email is going to be abc at xyz.com the message is going to be something so after adding these let's hit send it won't send us a response but it throws us an error so it threw us an error because i think because we keep this colon so let's just go ahead and remove this colon completely or let's just add colon c and not specify any number after that so let's uh, let's just say it's going to be and let's go ahead inside of new request hit send once more and let's hope so it does not send us any response which means that our data has been added let's go back and you see this data is added now so let's just cancel this request and let's also go ahead and send a re response now so i'm going to say this dot json is going to be message let's just add a message and data added successfully all right, cool. Let's go ahead and send a request once more. And that's going to give us a message. And we go back, we see it's added one more time. After we know that our data is being added successfully, let's just go ahead and change this back to A2 to C2, from A2 to C2. And now, instead of adding these static values, we are going to create it dynamically. So our body comes in a format where it's an object with the name, email and message but we have to format it the way that it's going to be an array and inside of that array we are going to have only one item not two items but only one item and that's going to contain the name in here the email in here and the message in here so how do we format our body object the way we want it to be so it's going to be in this format so first thing is we need to extract the keys from our body so the key is basically this this and this the message the name and email these are called the keys of an object and the value is basically what the user passes in this is going to be the value uh, now it shows a string but it's going to be the value so we can get the keys of an object now let's just add some part right over here i'm just going to call this object to sheets right let's just call this object dot sheet objects to sheets right so now let's go ahead and get the things that we want to get right so from this body right now you can see we have the message the name and email this is the whole object all we want to do is we want to get the value so this value from message this value from name and this value from the email how do we do so because it's an object and we want to store these values inside of an array so we can easily very easily do that by just let's just create a variable i'm going to call this values and let's set that to object dot values and then we can pass in the object that we want so it's going to be body what this will do is it will extract each and every value so inside of this object we have the name usman so it's going to take usman it's going to put that in, in an array and then it's going to take this email this abcxyz is going to put that into another email and it's going to take this message which is something it's going to put that inside of that 
array again and it's going to return to us an array of strings as you can see it's going to be a string array and let's just actually go ahead and console.log these values right over here and i'm going to comment this out because we don't want to add the data again and again so now all we're doing is we're getting the values from this object so let's go ahead and hit send let's go ahead and open this up so you see we get osman which is the name and then the email and then the something whatever the message was so finally we get this format we have this array inside of that we have three values so let's go ahead and uncomment this so right over here we need an array and inside of that we need another array where we have the values so basically what we can simply do is we can create an array and then we can just say values that's all we have to do to make this work because it's an array and we are going to put this array inside of this yellow square brackets array right so this values points to points right over here and not to confuse the names let's just go ahead and rename this so you can easily go inside of vs code you can go on to a variable and you can press f2 and you can just change all instances of this one so instead of values i'm going to call this rows so that it's appropriate so now we have the rows that comes from object values and then we can just console log the rows then we can pass in these rows inside of an array fine so that's all we have to do let's go back in here and i'm going to clear this sheet completely right now what we are going to do is we're going to go inside of here and we're going to send message you see it processes and that says data added successfully if we go back to the sheet we see those three values now if i change something like let's just say uh something i want to tell you whatever right and let's just change the name to again some random gibberish and hit send one more time and you see this data gets added now the video is quite long so we are not going to create all the front end by ourselves but i'll show you the javascript part so right over here if we want to serve a front end so if someone goes to localhost 5000 we want to serve some front end right so we are going to create a public folder so let's go in here in the root let's create a folder called public and in here i'm going to create a file called index.html and we want to serve this file through express through our web server so we can simply go ahead and say app.use we can say express.static and it's going to be the name of the folder which is public so now let's go inside of index.html and let's generate some boilerplate i'm going to say h1 hello world hit save and if we go back and let's just go inside of here let's go to localhost port 5000 and we see hello world finally that works so i have the code right over here in this github repository i'll put this link in the description below as well what you can do is you can just go ahead and go to the public folder and inside of here you can go to index html you can copy all the code if you want but all i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the style tag and let's copy this I'm going to paste the style tag right below the title because this is not a CSS course. So I just put the styles right over here and then we can just go ahead and I'm just going to copy the body part. So the container part. So let's paste that in. Once it's done, let's change the title to contact form and right over here, you can just hit refresh and we get a beautiful looking, not so beautiful looking, but it's fine. It works. Now let's do the JavaScript logic sending the request. So what we can do is we can just go ahead and create a script tag right over here. You can create it however you want, but I like it to be here. Now inside of the script tag, first off, I'm going to get the contact form. So let's just say const contact form is going to be equal to document dot get element by ID. That's going to be contact form. This is basically this form right over here. Then I'm going to get get back a couple of elements then i'm going to get the inputs and i'll just fast forward that part because i assume you know the front end javascript part all right so we have these html elements now inside of our client side javascript all we can do is we can just go ahead and say contact form dot add event listener we can add the submit event listener right over here and we can let's create an arrow function now inside of here we get an event back in e which is the event and first off we can just go ahead and say e dot prevent default because by default when you submit a form it reloads the page and that's what we have to prevent right then what we can do is we can just go ahead and say await now we can only use await inside of async function so let's just go ahead and say make this async 
we can say await and we can use the browser's built-in fetch api so fetch slash send dash message quite simple right and then instead of fetch we can add a bunch of options so first thing we'll need is the method sorry we'll need the method which will be post because it's a post request and then we are going to need the headers so the headers are going to be are going to have a content dash type of application slash json and then we will have the body which is going to be json dot stringify because we are passing in an object we have to pass in inside of the json stringify because body body will always be a string right so we have to take this object and we have to convert it to a string so in the body we can pass in the name which will be name input dot value then we will have the email which will be email input email input dot value and then finally the message will be message input dot value all right so that is it finally what we can do is after the form is submitted after all of this is done we can just go in here and we can set the name input dot value we can set that to an empty string and we can do the same thing for the others so it's going to be the email input and the message input so that we have the form cleared up all right so going back right over here let's hit refresh and i'm going to put in some fake data using the fake filler so let's say fill all inputs we have this this and this right over here if you see inside of the contact form data there is some data but we don't need to look into this data so we can just go ahead and say let's go inside of here hit send and that's going to send the data and clear the form all right fine and you see we have our data that is so cool and i think we can make one little change inside of here where we have the range so the range is a2 to c2 which is kind of inappropriate if we look at it because a2 starts right over here and c2 ends right over here and we are all we are doing is we are appending the data so i don't think we need a2 to c2 we can just have a to c let's try that out if that works so we can just go back in here and let's fill the fake data and hit send and that works that also works so it works and it puts the data inside of a sheet i hope this helped you out the code will be open source on this github repository i will put the link in the description below do check it out let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions if you have any feedback what else do you want to see on this channel and i hope this helped you out in this improved your skills about node.js and google sheets also check out fireships video i'll put the link in the description below also in the cards above thanks for watching have a nice week ahead